Okay, today is Monday, March 28th, is that right? 28th, 2022. We're working on four questions. We are building up to our final exam. These are the meat potatoes of what we need to be able to do to be successful on our final substantive test for Chapter 4. The first question says draw 21 over 100% and 105 and 1/2%. So we're going to start with a new page here. And we're going to draw 21 over 100%. Now, the first thing I – oh, not there. Percent sign goes right here. The first thing I want you to know is that this is not the same thing as this. And that little equal sign with a line through it means does not equal. Okay? So when we talk about 21 hundredths of a percent, we are talking about if this was 100 squares, and I'm just going to roughly rudimentally – I don't think I hit, I think I did nine lines, eight lines, whatever. We're going to pretend that's how many squares. That's right, 100. Not everybody showed it once. And if we're looking at this, 21 one hundredths of a percent, then we are looking at less than 1%. So that right there represents 21 hundredths of a percent. Now, obviously, I have to do something to uh, make it exact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this square, this 1% square, and go over here, and I'm going to magnify it. And there is 100 squares within that 1%. And I'm going to shade in, grabbing my highlighter if I can, 21 of them, 10, 20, 21. Oh, that's terrible. But you get the idea. If my marker worked better, it would be good. And that is what 21 hundredths of a percent looks like. Now, just to show you the difference, if I go back in time to right here, and I wanted to show you 21%, this would be 21%, right? Not 21 one hundredth of a percent. Our second question asks us to do 105 and a half percent. So 105 and a half percent. Again, if I start with my hundreds grid, so here is two one hundreds grid. Now, why did I do two? There's more than 100%. So if I shade in the first one, and I shade in the whole thing, that would represent 100%, or, as a fraction, 100 out of 100 squares. If I was to take the other one and shade in five of them, one, two, three, four, five, that is 5%. So that would, right there would be 5 out of 100. And then, of course, I'd have to do another half of 1. And since I want to make sure that's a half, I'm going to take it over here, circle it, bring it down here, grab my highlighter, shade in half of it, and that would be 105% and a half. So this, is, this here is 5%, and this is a half a percent. So altogether it would be 105 and a half percent. Okay, back here. Question two says, uh, write as a fraction decimal to percent. So the first fraction you're given is 1 over 200. As a decimal, there are two ways I can do that. The first fraction I can make this into, I'm going to use this space over here, 1 over 200, can be thought of if I divide both by 2, it can be 0 0.5 out of 100. Or, if I multiply both by 10 now, I get 5 over 1,000. Or alternatively, if I took 1 over 200 and multiplied it both by 5, I can get 5 over 1,000 anyway. So as a fraction, an equivalent fraction, we can say 5 over 1,000. And Deacon, how do I read that fraction? And how do I, how do I write 5,000 as a decimal? Correct. So once we have it to a fraction whose denominator is 10, 100, or 1,000, or 10,000, or 100,000, or a million, or 10 million, or 100 million, we can simply read the fraction and write it as a decimal purposefully. Now, the next thing says to write it as a percent, and already I know what the percent is because I have this answer right here. And since percentages are always fractions out of 100, what percent would this be? We would say it is 0.5%. So we have 0.5%, but it says to write it two ways. So, Olivia, what's another way I could write 0.5%? 
zero point five. If I read you that instead of saying zero point five, what decimal is that? How would you read that? Five tenths, or you could just say half. Correct. So instead of saying half a percent, you could write it like this: half a percent. So both of those answers are the same same thing. If you didn't get that, make a note of it because they're both expressing half a percent. Our next one says zero decimal one five one. Which, if I ask you to read that, Julius, how do you read zero decimal one five one properly using place value? One hundred fifty one what? Thousandths, correct. So because I read it as one hundred fifty one thousandths, it's pretty freaking easy to write as a fraction, isn't it? Because that's the same thing, one hundred fifty one thousandths. But in order to get it to a percent, uh, Jolie, I need to have it as a fraction that has one as a denominator, an equivalent fraction with what denominator? A hundred. So if I write it over here as an equivalent fraction, I divide it by 10, and I divide this by 10, move the decimal over one place to get 15.1. I'm not really going to use this fraction, except for right over here, because 15.1% is your answer. How else could I write that? A second way? 15 and 1 tenth percent. I could also write it as 15 and a tenth percent. Okay, are we good? And our last one says two-fifths of a percent. Now, before I get to that, oh, does everyone agree that two-fifths percent is the same thing as four-tenths percent? That's important. So if you're getting stuck on changing two-fifths of a percent to a fraction in a decimal, be aware that that's something you need to know, and also, that that's the same thing. So if I wanted to change two-fifths of a percent to a decimal, I could either make it an equivalent fraction, so four over ten being four-tenths of a decimal, and then just write it as a decimal. Or alternatively, just two divided by five will tell me 0 0.4, and I could write it as 0 0.4%, because that's the best starting place for us. Because 0 0.4% as a fraction is 0 0.4 out of 100, which is what out of 1,000? Four out of 1,000. So our answer is four thousandths as a fraction. I could reduce that down to lowest terms, which would be one two hundred and fiftieth, because both are divisible by four. So if you were smart enough to put one under two hundred and fifty, that's great. Did anyone do that here? Nobody? Okay, no problem. And as a decimal, Tori, what number is that? Four what? Four thousandths, which is zero point zero zero four thousand. And those are our answers for the second question. Our last two questions are to calculate mentally and with a calculator percentages of numbers. So the first one we're going to start with is 21 and a tenth percent of 68. When you do your work on your tests, there is no strategy to find 20% in terms of just one step. But there is a strategy we use to find 10%. And Gavin, what is that strategy? Good. So 10% is what? Don't say $6.8 because it drives me crazy. $6.80. Question. You could. Yes, you could. But we're just sticking to the basics of this. I agree. You could just divide it by 5. But 68 divided by 5 is not really a mental math strategy because it's very difficult to do. So if 10% is 680, we do know how to find 20% now by doubling it, which is $13.60. Now, for some of us, doubling six dollars and eighty cents might be difficult. But if you double eighty cents, it's a buck sixty. Double six dollars is twelve dollars. Twelve dollars plus a buck sixty is thirteen sixty. Gavin, continue along. How do you get one percent? Yeah, so that would be sixty-eight cents. And the last one, uh, Avery, how do I get a tenth of a percent? Move the decimal three times, which would be. 0 0.068. Now, some people might say that's not money, because money only has two decimal places. But that's not true, because we could have eight tenths of a cent. Now, once we have that, oops, wrong number. We're going to take our 20% and our 1% and our tenth of a percent, and that would be 21 and a tenth percent. Add those together. That would be, what's that going to be? That's going to be $14.28, $14.34.
13, oh, I just forgot what I was going to say. Four, 14, thir oh, for heaven's sake. 14, 34, and 8 tenths of a cent. Is that right? Did I do that right? Is that what you got for an answer? Good. Now, if you round up, if you said, or approximately, you can use the wavy lines or the equal sign with a dot above it, approximately $14.35 is equally okay because we're just using our uh, our number cents to approximate that. But in, in all facts, it's $14.34 and 8 tenths of a cent. Now, if we do this with a calculator, what do we have to do? Calvin, what do we have to do if we're going to do this calculator? You've got to find out what Correct. Excellent. So 21 and 1 tenth percent is this, which is this, which is this, which is this. So once we have that written out, this is all you need to do with a calculator. So 0 0.211 multiplied by $68 is the same answer we got before, 14 and 34 cents and 8 tenths of a cent. Any questions on that? Pampers pull-ups is correct. Oh, I just unpaused it, so that has no correlation to the last thing I said. Pampers pull-up is just some random words I just said. But I did press pause in the video and said, I'm a big kid now is the... Uh, yeah, pull-ups, Pampers pull-ups. Our last question says mentally calculate 230%. And uh, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is find 200%, and that's going to be doubling a number, which is 80 bucks. 10%, move the decimal, as Gavin said before, which is 4 bucks. And 30%, which is 3 times 10%, which would be 12 bucks. Once we know that, we're going to take our 200%, add it to our 30%, and we're going to get $92. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to borrow the other side of the board. This is actually quite an easier question in terms of converting to a decimal because there's less steps. 230% as a fraction is 230 out of 100. Now, to change that to a decimal, it's very difficult to change an improper fraction to a decimal, so we actually have to use what, Colby? A mixed fraction, which, of course, is 2 and 30 hundredths, which is 2 and... 30 hundredths. Now, if you acknowledge that 2 and 30 hundredths is the same thing as 2 and 3 tenths, then you can actually knock off that insignificant zero and just use 2 decimal 3 instead, right? It'd be easier. But you don't need to. You can keep the zero there. It's insignificant. So 230% of 40 would look like this. Grab a Vuitton calculator, and hopefully it's 92, and it is, and that's how you do it with a calculator.